What is up, guys? So someone wrote to me and asked a question. They said, how and why are you attracted to paganism, Pick? So I thought I would answer that today. So I've told my story a few times of how I became pagan, how I discovered paganism. So I thought today I would answer how and why am I attracted to paganism? That's not a question I don't think I've ever answered before. So that's what someone asked me. How and why are you attracted to paganism, Pick? So I don't know if that was meant to be a judgmental thing or a curious question. But I figured that'd be a good topic to talk about. And so I could share it with you, and I'm sure a lot of you would have the same reasoning behind it that I do. Or maybe not. If you don't, you can share your story of what attracts you to paganism in the comments below. And let me know, because I'm interested as well. I think it's interesting. So I won't go into my background other than to say I came from a religious background, a spiritual background, a Christian background. And so I began to think for myself, like most of us do, and I found a lot of issues and problems with Christianity. Since we're going to go there, talking about how and what attracts me to paganism, I can tell you what deters me from Christianity, since that is the religion I left to go to where I am now. And so we can start with John 3.16. Uh, and for those that don't know what that is, you do, I'm sure you probably do, but for those that may not, it is the famous quote that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Especially this time of year, around December, they love to quote that. That's the quote you see all the time since we're coming up on Christmas. And so, it's not just that quote that got me, but it's the idea of that quote in the line, that whoever, like it's a choice. The more you think about it, and the more I thought about it, there is no choice to it. Because in Christianity, they, Christianity they teach that God knows everything. And Christians will agree that God knows everything, that there, you can't surprise God. With that said, he knows who's going to hell before they're even born. There is no choice to it. You know, the wheat in the shafts, you know, the whole thing where the chosen ones, they are chosen. And that bothered me, that there is no whoever believes. It's they were chosen to believe, and everyone else is born to go to hell, basically, because God knows everything. So he already knows before you were born if you were going to become a Christian and go to heaven or go to hell. So there is no choice to it. So that bothered me for the longest time. And also the myth of the devil betraying God and becoming Satan, you know, Lucifer, um, you know, becoming the devil. That whole myth. If God knows everything, then he already knew what he was going to be before he was even created. So this whole thing was planned out for him to betray God and get kicked out of heaven and all that stuff. If God knows everything, then that was our, that was no surprise. He, it was planned. It was supposed to be that way. So stuff like that bothered me and deterred me away and had me thinking and looking into other things. And so, without bashing Christianity even more, other than to say that also another thing that bugged me was the thought that we are sinners that need a Savior, that there's we're born unto sin, that we, uh, from the beginning of birth, are going to need Jesus or we're going to go to hell, basically, when we come to uh, the age of knowledge. So when you're older, not little babies. Some people believe babies will go to hell if they're unbaptized. Then you have other branches that believe that when they get older and they start knowing right from wrong, that's when they have uh, can go to hell. And in between. So I know Christianity. Like I said, I was grown up and brought up in it. So I know it very well. I've read the Bible. So... I, it got me thinking of a lot of things. And so I had a uh, crisis of faith, I guess you could say, during that time. And also, 
like I said, just issues, not just really a crisis of faith, just stuff that didn't gel with me, I didn't like. Um, and then don't, don't even talk about all the apocalypse and end time stuff, That all that too. So, um, yeah, so that did not gel with me. We'll just say that, that we're sinners and all that. And why do Christians worship God? It's because he saved them from hell. Why'd you become a Christian? And you ask nine out of ten of them, why'd you become a Christian? Because he saved me from hell. I'm a sinner. And that'll be what you get nine, nine times out of ten. And so that bothered me too. Like, is that the only reason to pray to God and worship him is because of the devil? Because of the fear of hell? Is it? Is that the, what it is? And so, like I said, a lot of things uh, were very disillusioning to me whenever I got older and really thought about what's going on. And so I'm sure a lot of you watching this that grew up in that also felt the same way. You were ostracized. You were condemned for believing what you believe or what, how you were, how you're born. There's something about you that they rejected you because of hell because of devil, because of these laws. And people believe this religion because they grew up in it as since children, and that's just the way it is. And that's the answer they'll give you, or that the word is inspired by God, so that is God's word. That's just brainwashing. I'm going to get it flat out, get let my Aries come out as I tell uh, my partner Aphrodite Child. That's just brainwashing talk right there, that if you were born into it, if you believe it because that's how you're raised, if that's how it is, and that's God's word, that sounds like brainwashing manipulation to me. Like I said, we're going to go there. So if how and why are you attracted to paganism? That's why and how. So I went and decided to look somewhere else, and I started looking into it, and I've told this story before that I looked into paganism just to see what else is out there. And it brought up the duality of divinity, and it made sense to me. You look at nature and plants and animals, there are lots of female and male things out there, you know. So there's a duality to nature. And even our cells, our genes, us, we have male and female DNA in us. And so I was thinking there, there's a duality right there, you know. And so I have really written, scribbled down notes about <laughs> this kind of stuff. So I'll look down a lot, but that was, I remember that'll be, that was one of my beginning thoughts when I started looking at paganism because um, the thought, I was so hardwired to monotheism that the thought of another female or a, a feminine uh, goddess possibly I always joke that it always fried my brain just at the thought. That's how brainwashed I was, is that the thought of another of a female goddess. It's a, uh, you know. <laughs> so that was it. And it took a while to uh, really think about how I was. So another thing that attracted me to paganism was the, uh, what, the reason and idea of worship that we pray to the guys for thankfulness. It's not for fear, fear of going to hell, but just the thankfulness for life, for our family, and for what we have, and so forth. It's coming from a heart of gratefulness and thankfulness. And it's not a set rigid schedule of what I need to pray for and how I need to pray uh, or why. It's when I can or want to and I like that, the free thought of having to honor God's or wanting to honor God's just for the thankfulness of life. I really like that. And also I'm attracted to going back to honoring the gods of my ancestors before Christianity invaded my ancestors' homeland. So people as such as myself did not invent Christianity we did not. We were also invaded and converted and so forth. So much so through the generations that we are the ones that are the highest proponents. People that look like me are the ones that you assume are the biggest Christians in the world. Because uh, we, but we were also uh, converted by 
force in some places. And the conversion, the, the whole history of Christianity is also was a turn off to me too, that it was people think that Christians are grandfathers, great grandfathers, and all the way down to the beginning, we were rescued by Christianity because it saved us from going to hell. So there's that hell thing again and worshiping false gods, which again is brainwashing again, saying that your gods are false. And that's not true. They're saying if you worship those false gods, those are demons, it's going to ruin and wreck your life. And that's brainwashing talk. The whole thing is brainwashing. And like I said, and we were force converted, just like everyone else that was force converted in the past. And it was not just, now some that, some weren't, I'll give it to you, that some may not have been, some willingly went, but you read even in like the British history and all that stuff at the PICS, not me, but the P-I-C-T-S, the PICS, um, the Celts and Gauls, they would even have rebellions that would be squashed uh, by the church in the Roman church and all that stuff and forced back to in compliance of worshiping uh, the gods and the main religions of the time, such as Catholicism and everything. So it wasn't, they people didn't go down easy and just convert overnight. It wasn't going to a church camp meeting and raising your hand and accepting Jesus in your heart. That's not how our ancestors became Christians at the beginning. That was after years and years of compliance and brainwashing when Christianity became the normality that it started becoming more like that. How Christianity was supposed to be before it was forced to onto a lot of people. So like I said, there's a lot to that as well. Um, so yeah, I like going back to before Christianity came to my ancestors' homelands, going back like we were untouched, going back to the way it was. And like I said, and the idea of worshiping false gods that are demons that destroy your life, that's not true. Whenever you worship these gods and you get to know these gods, you see since the same peace and communal experience that you would in your religion, in Christianity. And so it doesn't destroy lives um, any more than any other spiritual path does. So that was just another thing as well that you learn as you go. And so there you go, guys. So that's the answer to how and why are you attracted to paganism, Pick? Like I said, I can get into it. I can get my Aries out since I was I have a sign of Aries being when I, when I was born. So I can get under my skin. I'm a fire sign. <laughs> so I guess it's kind of a rant video, but that's why I have my reasons. I have my reasons and I know you do too. So there you go. Anyway, guys, I will talk to you later, I guess. Bye.